Welcome to our workshop on objections and other replies. Often, when I assign a paper or a discussion board topic or an essay question on a task, I ask people to reply to something, particularly to reply to someone else's argument. And one form of reply is an objection. In this presentation, we're going to talk about how to clearly present objections and other replies. Right? So I'll give you some techniques that will help your reader understand right, what you're trying to say. Now, if you haven't done so, right, you should watch the workshop on argumentation. Okay? I'm going to build on the concepts that I present there right, to explain the clearest way to present an objection or another kind of reply. Let's start off by addressing the question, what is a reply? A reply is a response to someone else's argument. For example, suppose someone says, Philosophy 306 is an awesome class because it has a brilliant professor. And someone comes along and says, you're correct that it's an awesome class and you're right that it has to do with the brilliant professor, but it's also because the professor is kind and friendly and personable as well. Right? well the person's giving a kind of a reply to the argument. In this case, providing more reasons to think that the argument works. Okay. Now, another example might be, oh, philosophy 306, yeah, that professor isn't all that smart. He just fakes it well. Right? Well, that would be another type of reply. In that case, it would be an objection. There are many types of replies. Right? For example, there could be a clarification. Right? You could say, oh, when you say brilliant, Right? I agree, but I think you particularly mean brilliant in his knowledge of his own field. Or corroboration, and hey, look, this paper he produced proves the same thing. Or, as I've already given, an objection, right? a reason to think it's not true. Or an illustration. Oh yes, last week's lecture on affirmative action just demonstrates how brilliant the professor is. Or a request for any of the above. Right? It could be, so what did you mean when you said he was brilliant? Were you talking generally or just in his own field? Right? It could be statements of agreement, right? which is, yes, you're right, he is brilliant. Right? Or, no, you're wrong, right? he's not brilliant. Anything like that. In this presentation, we're going to focus on one type of reply, objections. Right? Objections are replies that are designed to show that something goes wrong with the person's argument. In the end, we'll talk a little bit about how what we have to say here is relevant to other kinds of reply. Right? But objections are particularly important for our purposes for the following reason. This is a philosophy class, and philosophy tends to work through something that's sometimes called dialectic. How does this work? Well, someone makes an argument. Might be a good argument, might be a bad argument. Let's say it's a good argument. Well, someone says, you know, that's a pretty good argument, but look, here's a problem with it. Right? And then someone says, ooh, that's a good objection, but here's a problem with your objection. Right? And another person says, you know, I think your objection works, but here's how we fix the original argument. And someone says, well, no, that doesn't work, and we go on from there. Right? When we do that for a while, right, we improve our arguments, right? which has two benefits. One is people who disagree better understand each other, right? and sometimes, we hope, the people who are wrong on the particular issue will be convinced by the strongest arguments. Right? So the people who happen to be correct on the issue will, after all the arguments have been made, right, they will have made it clear that they're correct and why they're correct. Right? So objections are an important part of philosophical discussion. Right? And for that reason, I'm going to focus on the question, how do we present an objection? An objection is an argument whose conclusion is that something is wrong with another argument. Let me give you an example to illustrate objections. This example is from the movie Harry Potter and the Order of the Phoenix. Now, let me give you some background so you can understand what's going on. The characters, the children in the book, are students at a school for wizards. Right? They all have these in this inborn magical talent, and they're learning how to use it. Right? Now, they're basically in their class for defense against the dark arts, which is against evil magic. Now, one of the students, named Harry Potter, right, 
um, has been targeted by a t by an extremely evil villain, right, named Lord Voldemort, right. He has recently sort of come back from being almost dead, right. But not everyone believes that he's actually back. So here's the conversation between the students and their new teacher for Defense Against the Dark Arts. 